Hello everyone and welcome to a grid add-on guide. And if you're a new viewer, this doesn't seem strange, but if you're an old viewer, you're going to be doubting everything in life because nothing makes sense anymore. Tempest doing a, a grid video? But he's such a Heelbot fan! What is going on? I actually decided, you know what? It's about damn time I did an add-on guide for grid. And so I decided to do that and learn grid at the same time as I got my holy spec, and I must admit I'm really enjoying the both combined, I am just having so much fun that I can't even describe how much fun I'm having, and I'm actually starting to fall in love with Grid just a little bit. It's actually quite lovely. Anyway, so let's get right into it. And um, this is going to start off being quite a basic guide, because obviously with a lot of the plugins that Grid has, and a lot of the options, it can get quite complicated. So I'm just starting with the basic Grid add-on in this video, and this will hopefully get you to the point where you can start using it right away. Remember that you have, you're going to need Cleek to really use this like a total boss. Uh, you don't have to use Cleek, obviously, or, or Click, however you want to say it, but I will have a link in the description to an add-on add -on guide on click, click, whatever. It, th how can you spell it like that and expect me to pronounce it the right way, okay? It sounds like it could work both ways. Anyway, so go and get um, click because that is pretty awesome. Anyway, let's actually get into the video, and of course I will be doing more and more videos on this. If you have a particular thing in Grid that you want to know, please post it in the comments, and please try to be as detailed about it as possible. You know, basically telling me, it doesn't show what I want! How can I help with that? Versus if you say, I need it to show mana bars, energy bars, something like that, then then we're talking. Then I can actually start um, doing something helpful. Enough talk, let's get going. First of all, okay, you've got your frame lock. You can turn that on and off, and basically what this lets you do is you can drag it around your screen. Now, what I would recommend doing is you might kind of have this set up and everything and feel like it's in the perfect place, but you're going to want to leave frame lock off for the little while that you were using it at first. And you might say, Tempest, why? And I will tell you, I was doing Thuk last night on my priest, and I ended up having boss timers over my grid bars, and I could not actually see anyone's health, and therefore could not heal. So until you've definitely 100% got everything sorted out, you want to make sure that you can move it in case something like that does happen. I have since locked it because I think that I've pretty much got it exactly the way I want, and I might do a little bit of tweaking here and there, but for the most part it's actually pretty awesome. I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to go and lock that again. And now we're going to move on to the next option, which is horizontal groups. Basically, you can either have it be group 1 going down like that, or group 2 going down like that, or you can have it going horizontally like that. Personally, I like the horizontal groups. That works for me because I don't like having two giant vertical columns. I like having the sort of the longer horizontal groups because I feel like it kind of fits in with a lot more of my UI. You know, I can fit it in across here over the health bars of my targets and, you know, uh, my target's target and everything. And I'll just have two columns over there and then I can have Forte Exorcist so just a little bit above that. And yes, my UI does need a lot of refining because it's pretty terrible. Uh, in my opinion, but generally it does actually slot together a lot better, I feel, if you go with horizontal groups, but it is up to you, it is your personal preference, and that is why you're watching this video, so that you can set it up the way that you want to, not the way that someone else wants, because guess what, I don't heal on your computer, you do. Because if I healed there, then, um, yeah, I would kind of be in your house, and that would be weird. And we've got um, the show tab, which if we turn the frame lock on and off, basically it just has that tab there. If you want the tab showing, you can have the show, the tab shown, and if you don't have the tab shown, you can just click on the border to drag it if you want to, it's not actually a um, problem. And of course the mini-map icon, you know, the little mini-map icons that you can go through and customize grid, or you can just type slash grid in the chat, or when you've got this frame lock thing off, you can just right click on that little grid name over there, which is pretty awesome. And then you've got the layouts. So you've got solo layouts, and you can have this... Basically, you can have it sort by class, and the W slash pets, that's basically including pets. So if you want to have pets there, so that you can see pets and maybe heal pets. Personally, I don't, because you know what? If your pet dies, that is your damn problem. I don't care. Uh, that could be a little bit of a problematic, but honestly, what is the what are the odds that a hunter is going to be sitting there with his bear tanking the boss and he's on like half a percent and you know you have to heal him or everything's going to go horribly wrong i don't feel like that's particularly likely so i just don't care and i just like to have it without pets 
and just have it set up like that. It only has group 25 with tanks. I'm not entirely sure about how that works because I do not raid 25 man. I would actually kind of like to because that would be pretty awesome, I feel. But I raid 10 man and it doesn't have a with tanks um, section. However, I feel like that would probably just put the tanks in a separate section because it's a lot easier to keep track of the tanks when there are two of them in 10 people versus keep track of the tanks when there's two of them out of 25 people. It's going to get a much, much more difficult. So you might want to have group 25 with tanks when you're raiding 25 man. You might want to have that as a separate thing. And you've got the padding, which if we just drag this, basically it's like the space between the kind of the different people inside of the party. I have no one partied up with me, so it doesn't really demonstrate it quite as much. But basically you can just fool around with the padding and get it the way that you want it. And of course you've got the spacing. You can get it like that, you know, much, much closer together, kind of spaced apart nicely, or you can just have them all right up against each other um, like that. And of course you can adjust the scale, make it um, larger or not. Let's get that back to 100. 100. So there we go. Okay. And now we're going to go over to the background texture and the border texture. Now basically, you might be saying, and you might be looking at this and saying, you know what, I don't like this border over here, and I don't like that background right over there. I just want this little health bar over here. I just want that. I just want to see those. I just want to see all of those. I do not want a border. The border feels unclean. It feels unfinished. I don't like it. Get rid of it. Make it go away. You go over here and you can of course change it. You can change how it looks if you want to. If you want to get rid of it though, you just click none. Boom. The border texture is gone. And if you, or rather the uh, background texture is gone. And then you do the same thing for the border and then it will all go away. And of course you can change how it looks. You can just change the texture um, none to get rid of it completely and then change it to something else if you want it to still be there. And of course you can change the color. You just click on that and it gives you a little color wheel. This changes the opacity I think and this changes the darkness which I am not fooling with at the moment. And let's go back up over here. You've got your party layout, your 25 player layout. Basically these drop down menus are all basically the exact same thing. Some of them might have a couple of different options, but just sort them the way that you want and just feel what works right for you. Then we go over to the frame and let's rather go into the general tab and you can change the frame width and the frame height. So basically you might want these bars to be like really, really tiny. Maybe you want them to be squares, you know, then you can change that to like match the height. Let's get that down to like 32. There we go. You got like a little square. Maybe that's what you want. Personally, I feel like that would be very difficult to really get my mouse over to heal with. So I'm going to drag that out again to about there. And you can fool around with that uh, as however much you want it. You can change the border size. Now, you might be saying, why would I want that border like that? That can actually be quite helpful because with grid, you have various indicators. You get color coded squares as well as a border that can light up around the box. So if you're finding that the thing that you are tracking with that border lighting up, if that is being difficult for you to see when it's too thin, just increase the border size and that will make it a lot more visible. So what might seem like a really, really weird thing to change can actually be quite useful. If you're looking at that, maybe the border around it lights up when you have renew on right? You're a holy priest, you put renew your heal over time effect, and then the border lights up, but if it's too thin, you can't see it. So then you just change the border size, and everything is fine and okie dokie and just absolutely lovely. And I'm going to change that. I'm actually, I like that. I think I'm going to keep it at two, because I was having a bit of difficulty seeing it. And then you can change the corner indicators. Now the trouble with the corner indicators is you can't really see them. Come on, lag, there we go. That just changes the size of the square, if you see it there. Basically, that color-coded square is to tell me that Renew is up, much like with the border. So if you find that you can't actually see those damn squares, just increase the corner size. And of course, make sure that you've got it set up. Don't worry, we'll have a look at that in a second. And um, I'm not entirely sure. This has something to do with the tooltip. Ah, there we go. On, like, mouse over, I think is OOC. And you can have it never if you don't want the tooltip, and you can have always if you want the tooltip, I think. I'm not sure what OOC stands for, though, I'm afraid. Sorry, I am not the fountain of all wisdom, I am just trying to help you out. And 
if you read the tooltip of throttle updates, that's just there for when your computer is just lagging like crazy and you're having massive FPS issues or something. Then you might want to have throttle updates, but the rest of the time you do not tick that, ever. Orientation of the text, you can have it be vertical or horizontal, up to you. So we can change that even go over there, we can have it be horizontal. It actually seems to not really change much except where it goes, it just sort of slides to the side. I like it just being the vertical option. And you can change the frame texture, which will be all of these. So gradient is the one I've got it set up. You can have it be aluminium, armory, got it blizzard. I quite like gradient. I feel like that is a very nice looking one. And you can change the healing bar opacity if you want to. Totally up to you. And invert bar colors. I've actually been kind of fooling around with these. And I haven't actually managed to get it to change colors. That might just be me. It might not be working for me, but for some reason it's not really working particularly well. Except for invert bar color, which I will go outside and show you by getting my character to um, slam ridiculously hard against the ground. So let's go. Levitate won't be used. I'm sorry, buddy. Go break your legs. There we go. And if you invert the bar color, if you look at that, it just changes which way it goes. Look at that. I don't like to have it inverted. I, I like it the way it is. Um, but it's totally up to you. And you can invert the text color if you want to. Whatever works for you. And let's go with icon options. And you've got enable the icon cooldown frame, which is, I think when you kind of get like a... I've got it set so that when I get like a debuff that I can dispel, it's got a timer and an icon, because Chris Grid only has like one icon that it shows, and I have that set for when there's a debuff, so I know how much longer there is on it, and I can easily see it, what it is, and then I can dispel it with ease, and I like to have the cooldown frame. I think it's there to show how much time is left on the debuff, which is useful in things like Proving Grounds, where you have to dispel it before it expires, and then bad things happen. Whereas maybe the rest of the time it's not quite so important, but with debuffs like that, I think it's fairly important. And you can change the size of the icon and the icon border size. Unfortunately, I don't have it at the moment on this because I have no debuff, and I don't really want to mess with it too much, but let's move over to the indicators now. Now here is where we actually get it to show you things. Your border, as we said before, or as I said before, that weird border thing that we fooled around with the size of, and that's going to be there to alert you to something. Now, on this massive drop or sort of scrolly menu over here, you can have it show that border when something happens. And it's got pretty much everything here. So you scroll down and you find the thing that you want. Now, for me, I have ticked buff Prayer of Mending. So that when I put Prayer of Mending on myself, or on anyone, you know, that border should light up. Though it doesn't actually seem to be doing it, which is weird. Hang on a minute. Let's see if I can get that border. Where was that border size? There we go. Let's click it off. Odd. Why aren't you working? Work properly. Anyway, it's supposed to do that. It's supposed to light up when I have the prayer of mending on myself. I've got it set for that. And then you've got, um, for example, the center icon. I have it set for debuff type curse, debuff type disease, debuff type magic or poison. Maybe you want that set for your renew. Maybe you want the renew to be that icon. That is up to you to decide. But personally, I like it to be the debuffs because then it's much easier to see. Try not to have it ticking all of the debuffs. Try rather to have it ticking the things that are actually in your control. Though it might be nice to have it for debuff weakened soul, for example, because that can be something that uh, the timer of can actually be important to you. Maybe if you're a disciplined priest, you might want to get rid of everything else and just have weakened soul there. And that is up to you. And then, of course, we've got the top left corner. Now, the top left corner, those are the weird little boxes that we saw, like when I use Renew, and I get that little green box. That is the bottom right corner. And basically, you just tick the thing that you want it tracking. So if we go to the bottom right corner, you'll see that I have buff. Renew over there in bottom left corner. I don't think I have set for anything. But you can have that bottom left corner be for when you put power word shield on them or something. Then it'll light up and I'll just show you now. There we go. I've actually got the top right as well being power word shield. So it lights up with both of those. And now let's move on to the next one. The sensor text is generally for 
um, debuffs like their ghosts or they're getting healed or their health or how much they're missing. You can change that text to be whatever you want. I kind of like it with the default settings. I think that works quite nicely. And then I'm going to go over to the statuses. Now we're going to be going over these kind of buffs. Now, for example, with Renew, we want it to light up. And you can change the color by clicking on this, you know, color for buff Renew, when Renew is put onto the target. And of course, the problem can be maybe there's another priest and they're putting Renew on, but then it's showing their Renews on things. And how is that helping you at all? Because it's not. And you can just say, show if mine by ticking that. And then they can Renew as many people as they like. And you don't care because it's not messing with yours. It only shows your Renews on stuff. And then you can just go through all of these. Some of them it's important, some of them it's not too important. That is for you to decide. Maybe buff power word shield, does it really matter? There can only be like one person power word shielding people, so that's not particularly important, is it? And you can just go through all of these different things and have it be exactly what you want. I mean, there's a lot of options. It would be a way longer video. It's probably quite long as it is, so I'm not going through everything. But just kind of know that if you want it showing only yours, tick show off mine. And if there's something that you want up all the time, then maybe you want it to show if missing. So for example, maybe you renew again, you want your heal over time on them all the time. And maybe you'll have it show you when it's missing rather than when it's there. And you can kind of invert it like that. And of course your profiles, you can have it set the way that you want. Maybe when you start up a new character, you've got grid set up the way that you want. Maybe your Resto Druid, you want it set up exactly the same as your Resto Shaman, and then you just go and import it from your Resto Shaman. An enabled dual profile will have it switch between your specs. So maybe you want it differently set up for Discipline, and you want it differently set up for Holy. You just have enabled dual profile, and then when you change specs, it will change the settings, which is pretty awesome. And then if you've got the help section and you've got debugging stuff, which we're not really going to look at, but hopefully this will give you a bit of an idea of how to basically set up grid. I will probably be doing more videos on this as there's like a mazillion. I kind of like that. That is the new word uh, that I am inventing called the mazillion. There's a mazillion plugins for this um, add-on. There's quite a few. So I'm probably going to go through some of those and look at some of their features and how to set them up. But hopefully this will get you started on using Grid, because it is awesome, and I like it. I still love you, Healbot, don't worry. But Grid's pretty cool too, and maybe at some stage I'll look at Voodoo as well. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope this helped you out. Good luck with your healing adventures, and cheerio. Mm -hmm.